Hey guys, welcome back. So this is going to be a pretty short and sweet video just showing you how to take a time series you might find in the wild, identify the things that might be wrong with it for feeding it into our typical ARMA type models, and then how do you take care of all those things step by step. So I'll make both the data and code available on my GitHub and it'll be linked in the description of this video. So the data we're looking at today is data from Google Trends, which basically tracks what's the popularity of certain search terms over the years. So we're going to look at a CSV file called ice cream versus heater. So it's basically looking at the search frequency of the word ice cream versus heater. And we'll just be focusing on the search of heater for this video. So here's what the data looks like. I won't go over reading it in because that's been done a lot. The data looks like this. So one thing to note right off the bat is that it's definitely increasing since 2004 until 2020. So people are searching for this term more and more over the years. Another very obvious thing to note is that there's clear seasonality. So we see that these gray dotted lines, which signify the beginning of each year, the search term gets very popular around the winter. So by the way, this is United States data. So our winter is very cold. Therefore, search for the word heater is going to be highest when it's the coldest. The last thing you might note, which is a little more subtle, is that the volatility of the time series is going up. So in the beginning, it may not be fluctuating that much. But by the time we get to around 2016 to 2020, it's going up and down a lot. So all these things are going to need to be taken care of before we can feed this into any of our models. First things first, let's normalize the data because as you can see, the y-axis goes from 10 to 50. So it's going to be helpful for us to get that on a scale near zero going forward. Normalizing is pretty easy. So we just take the average and standard deviation of this series, which we're calling heater series. And then we just subtract off the mean and divide by the standard deviation. So this is a typical z-score normalization. So looking at the graph, it looks exactly the same because remember, this doesn't change the shape of the data. All it does is make sure that the mean is now centered around zero and the standard deviation of the data is now one. So now let's actually go into trying to make this data stationary because as you can see, it violates many, pretty much all the conditions of stationarity. The first one being that it's definitely increasing over time. We saw in several previous videos that one way to deal with that is to take the first difference. It's really easy to do that in pandas. You just do dot diff. So this just takes the first difference of the data. This drop naw is just because the first value won't have a value before it. So it's going to end up being nan or not a number and we just drop that. And this is what it looks like now. So we see you've successfully fixed the problem of it increasing or decreasing over time. Now it looks to be centered around zero for all time. So that's fixed. The next thing we're going to fix is this increasing volatility problem. Remember, to feed this into a ARMA kind of model, we need the standard deviation or volatility to be constant at all times. We clearly see that in the beginning years, it's pretty constant, but it gets bigger as time moves on. So one way to deal with that is to take the standard deviation within each year. So for example, here's the year 2004, and there's going to be some standard deviation here. Compare that with the year 2019, for example, and the standard deviation within this year is much higher. So what if we divided each of these data points, each of which is a month, by the standard deviation of the year that it's part of? So here we'd be dividing by a smaller value relative to over in 2019. So hopefully that means that the resulting series we get all has the same volatility. Let's see how to do it and if it succeeds. So first we have to get the volatility of each year. So that's pretty easy using a group by. We group by the year, so the index of our data, by the way, is the month and the year, so we just take the year part of that, and then we call the standard deviation function to get the standard deviation of each year. And this is what that should look like. So we see that for every year from 2004 until 2020, we have some standard deviation, and the standard deviation, as we can see graphically also, is going up, generally. So now we form this series called heater annual vol, which basically just forms a series that's the same length as our data, except it's basically calculating the standard deviation of the year for the current data point. And then we go ahead and just divide our series by that time series that we just created. And we end up with a graph that looks like this. So this looks like it does have pretty constant variance over time. So we fixed those two issues of stationarity, the first one being having an increasing or decreasing trend over time, and the second one being having a greater or decreasing volatility over time. So both of those things are fixed. Of course, we still see this seasonal pattern. It's a very clear seasonal pattern, so we need to take care of that. Doing that is going to be pretty simple using a very similar idea as what we just did. So instead of taking the deviation within each year, we're going to take the mean within each month. 
So looking at it graphically will probably make it easier to understand. So we're going to take the average of all Januarys, take the average of all Februarys, and so on until the average of all December. Because based on this diagram here, all the Decembers are pretty close to the average value of December. All of the Marches are close to the average value of March. So if we were to take the average of each month, and then subtract each of the data points by its respective month's average, we should be able to remove this seasonality. So let's go ahead and see how to do that. Again, we're going to use a group by, but here we're going to group by the month instead of the year. And instead of taking the deviation, we're going to be taking the mean. It's more clear what we did by looking at the result. So we see that we took the average of all Januarys, which ends up being this number, average of all February, which is this number, and so on. So now we have the average of this series for each of the 12 months. And now we need to basically create a time series which is the same length as our data, except the value of that time series is the average of the respective month. So we create that series using this code and it looks like this. And then we go ahead and simply just take our current series and subtract off that monthly average series. Doing so results in a time series that looks like this. So this, while we should do a formal test such as a Dickey-Fuller test or a unit root test to see if this is truly stationary, it looks visually more stationary than any of the series we've seen before, and so it's probably more appropriate to feed into our ARMA type models. So this is just a quick video on how to clean your time series data. Until next time.